before I start the video, don't forget to comment which car you think is gonna win this race. Also, come on, subscribe to the channel and find us on Instagram. Let's check out these two cars. This is a 1971 Dodge Demon 340. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just eating some Cheetos. I got one stuck in my throat. And I tell you what, you guys, those little 340s run like they are possessed. 1971 was the first year for the Dodge Demon, and unfortunately the name would change after 1972 to the Dart Sport 340 because certain religious groups weren't too happy about the Demon nomenclature. I guess you could say they were a little burned up about it. Regardless of the very brief run of only two years, Dodge hit it out of the park with the Demon 340, and these cars are highly sought after right now. Some people would argue that the 1971 Dodge Demon is more desirable than the 1972 model because of a few key changes that took place. For instance, in 1971, the compression ratio was still an impressive 10.3 to 1, but then in 1972, it would drop down all the way to 8.5 to 1. Talk about our featured car being saved by the bell. It's all right, cause I'm saved by the, bell. the 1971 Dodge Demon also featured a forged crank and rods, but then in April of 1972, that forged crank was replaced with a cast one. Not to mention that in 1972, the intake valves were also decreased from 202 all the way down to 188. So I think it's safe to say that the 1971 Demon 340 engine was just a little bit hotter. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Speaking of engines, we're obviously looking at a 340 cubic inch V8 putting out 275 horsepower at 5,000 RPM and 340 pound-feet of torque at 3,200 RPM. You might not realize this, but the Demon 340 came from the factory with heavy-duty suspension. It had thicker torsion bars and a bigger anti-roll bar up front. It even had six-leaf rear springs and heavy-duty shocks, which definitely gave it a more sporty feel. So I guess you could say the Demon really is the complete package. It made great power, it could corner well, and it was very affordably priced. It's a shame that the modern Demon isn't a little bit cheaper, but those things are pretty darn wicked. A three-speed manual transmission was standard in the Demon 340, but you did have two other options available. The first was the 727 automatic transmission, or like this car, you could get that ultra-sweet four-speed manual. And do I even need to say it, you guys, but that interior is f***ing awesome. An eight and three-quarter rear is sitting out back, and from the factory it came with a set of 323 gears. But our featured Demon? Well, it's been upgraded just a little bit to a set of 430. And you know what they say about drag racing? The devil is in the details? <laughs> As you probably already expected, the curb weight of the Demon 340 is rather impressive because it's coming in at only 3,340 pounds. Road Test Magazine got their grubby little mitts on a Demon 340 in April of 1971, and it ran 0 to 60 in 7.8 seconds and the quarter mile in 14.6 seconds at 96 miles per hour. However, they did admit that they think the car would run a lot quicker because of several factors. Number one, the conditions were terrible. They mentioned there was salt all over the track. And number two, they had put several hundred miles on the car, and not once did they check or tune anything. So here's my Cars and Zebras hypothesis. As long as it's optimally tuned and you have decent conditions, this demon is going to run a lot quicker. Especially if you drive the hell out of it. The Demon 340 was a fantastic deal in 1971, so why don't you guys sit down? We're going to do a little math lesson today. It started out at only 2721 bucks. The four speed was another $189, and then the sure grip rear was going to cost you another 41 bucks. That gives you a cheapest total of only $2,951 and adjusting for inflation that's only $18,784 today. And I don't know about you guys, but after this discussion of the Demon 340, I would love to buy one myself, but they only made 10,098 of them back in 1971. And wait a minute, what is going on in this photo? It looks like these two are ready to jump in the back seat of that demon and commit a few sins. Demon 340, let's check out its opponent. 
This is a 1970 Chevrolet Camaro. And at first glance, you might think to yourself, whoa, that's a really cool Z28. But this car is actually a Super Sport 396. And even though the name says that it's a 396, the engine was actually a 402 cubic inch V8. But this specific car goes a little bit deeper than that because it features the ultra rare, most powerful engine available in the Camaro in 1970, that being the L78. And that's pretty hardcore. And with that L78, you had a compression ratio of 11 to 1. And get this, it was making 375 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 415 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM. If you bought a 1970 Camaro equipped with the L78 engine, you only had two transmission options. The first was the four-speed manual, or you could get the Turbo 400 three-speed automatic that was specially tuned for the L78 engine, and that just happens to be what this car features. A fun fact for you guys is that 1970 was the last year that you could get a 12-bolt rear in a Camaro. After that, it went to the 10-bolt only. And in that 12-bolt, if you had the L78 engine, it came with 355 gears, but 410 was optional. And that just happens to be what this car's got stored in that fine rear end. The weight of the 1970 Camaro isn't overly impressive, especially when equipped with a big block. And that's because this car's curb weight in this configuration is 3,550 pounds, and if you're keeping track, that's 210 pounds more than the Demon. Let's talk production numbers, shall we? In 1970, they made just over 112,000 V8 Camaros, and for comparison's sake, 8,733 of those were Z28s. By chance, would you guys like to guess how many were L78 Supersports? 600! There were only 600 total L78 Supersport Camaros in 1970. Do you know how many of those 600 were RS Supersport cars with an automatic transmission and were black on black like our featured car? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's why I asked you guys. I was hoping one of you had the answer. Probably wasn't many. And I may not have already specifically mentioned this, but our featured car has the Rally Sport package, so you get the absolutely gorgeous front split bumper and that giant gaping grille, which is surrounded by the Camaro's resilient bumper. Ooh, so resilient. Get your lube out, Camaro lovers. Here's an original commercial. It's got deep bucket seats up front and a dash that wraps around you like a jet cockpit. There's more glass, less chrome, more class. You choose from four transmissions and six power plants that go all the way up to a 350 horsepower engine that you can order. The new Camaro. That's what it is. The super hugger. And if you think all this is just made for the young, don't. Because it's not how young you are, it's how old you aren't. Huh, because it's not how young you are, it's how old you aren't. That's a very interesting sales pitch, but could you imagine Chevrolet trying to use a similar message today? Hey, are you old but don't think you're old? You know, you wear bedazzled jeans and drink White Claw and say things like YOLO? 2020 Camaro, finance your midlife crisis. But enough talk about these two cars. Let's see what they can do on the drag strip. Just some additional information, at the time of filming, it was around 92 degrees. And in an absolute nail-biter, the Demon takes the win, running the quarter mile in only 13.39 seconds at 104.58 miles per hour, and that Camaro was hot on its tail, running a 13.47 at 103 miles per hour. Let's check that out one more time. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, find us on Instagram, and I'll see you at the next one.